Hi, I'm Lily Marshall, and the title of my talk is Publishing Power, Problems, and Pathways Forward. Who am I to publish something? There are better people out there to share their words than me. It's scary to make my ideas public. Have you or your students ever expressed these mental blocks to publishing writing for a wider audience? You are not alone. Indeed, putting our words out there can seem terrifying or even impossible, but on the other side of that mental block listens a world of benefits. Let's learn how to reach those gains and why through examples from a real world class. First, helping students publish their work. One of the most dramatic ways to add excitement and investment into an assignment for students is to offer the option of publishing it for a real, not just school, audience. Why is a wider audience so motivating? Let's face it, sharing a piece of writing only with a teacher is a bit of a letdown, as cool as the educators are. Moreover, sharing work with one's own class has the potential for social stress. However, getting a supportive comment from a peer across the city or even country is gold. That's an authentic audience. Here is a tale of how publishing worked with my Boston 7th graders, which might help you think through ways it might be possible in your context. This summer, I heard through the grapevine that a local nonprofit called Teens in Print was open to adding in-school collaboration beyond their usual after-school programming. There may be similar organizations near you. I reached out to Teens in Print, and together we developed this photo essay assignment, a perfect opportunity for students to build community by sharing a topic important to them, all while honing their writing and photo skills. I had Teens in Print staff members attend our Zoom classes to build excitement and share mentor texts of previously published student photo essays from around Boston, then come to our publication celebration to read and comment on finished student photo essays. It was so great to get a wider range of adult feedback for each piece versus just me. And they encouraged publication as well. This provided fresh motivation for doing another round of editing for spelling, grammar, and reading engagement since real people were going to read it, real beyond the teacher. As one student exclaimed when she was finally published on the Teens in Print website, I'm famous! If you are intrigued to try something like this with your students, here is a roadmap to authentic publication. Number one, investigate options. Research what local websites, newspapers, magazines, and exhibits might be open to publishing student work. This may seem daunting, but soon you'll see how many publications are hungry for fresh new words. Be bold and send off an email or introductory tweet. Number two, select the assignment carefully. The paper or project you encourage students to publish should not be a classic one, which is in danger of being used by other students to plagiarize. So for example, a five paragraph essay on causes of the Civil War, no, no, no. Rather, publishing is best for unique pieces of writing or art which rely on the student's identity as an individual. Number three, honor privacy. Keeping our students safe is our number one priority. So it's recommended to just use first names and last initials for minors, perhaps not even specifying school. Permission slips can easily be sent out via Google Classroom or other electronic platforms to minimize paperwork shuffling. Now at this point, you may realize we have been going about this backwards. For us educators to encourage students to embrace the power of publishing, we must also at least once experience its joy ourselves. Sharing our own experiences in publishing with students is a vital part of helping youth understand how real world writing works and why it's so powerful. Why even teaching grammar becomes easier when I can say, I need to follow these editing rules myself because furious, confused readers write in whenever I mess them up. So now some questions for you about publishing your own work. One, how many times has your work been published for a wider audience? For example, a magazine, newspaper, blog, book, etc., no matter the size. Two, if you published, how did it feel? Did anything come out of it? Three, what has stopped you from publishing? Are you intrigued to try for more? If so, what are your hopes or fears around getting your ideas out there? In my experience, what's kept the majority of brilliant adults from publishing their words, words which could truly help others, is that these adults think there's someone better than them to do so. Wrong. Does this story sound familiar? Imagine there's a teacher named Maria, a highly effective educator with over 17 years of experience who is considering publishing an article that would illuminate a facet of school life which is rarely discussed and could help many people. 
Maria works on the draft of this article for weeks and then gets frustrated that it isn't perfect and ultimately abandons it, muttering, there's probably someone better than me to publish. Now, what happens next? Yes, someone will publish, and it might be on a similar topic, but those authors likely did not teach for as long as Maria, nor have the depth of understanding as someone as experienced as Maria could provide. However, simply because they submitted, those other authors get the recognition, and readers lose out by getting a lower quality product. Maria was the better person to publish, but she just couldn't believe it enough to try and find out. The world needs to hear from you. What you have to say matters, and there are good publications which would be thrilled to publish your work today. I bet you $5 that if you send a pitch to five different outlets on a topic that lights you up, at least one will write back wanting to move forward. Most people never even try to pitch. What's the other pitfall which destroys people's publishing possibilities? Impossible pursuit of perfection. I have seen countless articles die unseen because the author was obsessing about one word in the title. Listen, nothing anyone writes is going to be perfect, so the key concept here is minimum viable product. A good enough try, which is far from perfect, but is adequate enough to get out there. In other words, just push out a solid try, which you know isn't 100%, so you can get real-world feedback to edit for future iterations. Here is an example. In 2020, I launched a new website to feature my cartooning. I didn't know which direction it would go in, but decided to just publish a minimum viable product and see where audience feedback led. I'm somewhat embarrassed to reveal that the first articles included such random gems as person bouncing in an ice cream cone like a pogo stick and cactus saying hello. The audience feedback was um, confused, but at least I launched. As the weeks went on, I began to tinker with other articles and cartoons that actually made sense, and also learned a bunch of new digital art techniques along the way in order to pull off the effects I realized I needed. Now, the illustrated English lessons on drawingsof.com are getting readers from around the world who use the free articles in their ELA and ESL classes. Hooray! But I never would have come to that useful form of publication if I didn't launch via the ridiculous minimum viable product of the ice cream cone pogo stick and gotten the feedback. The lesson for students and adults is clear. Just begin, because without putting your work out there and seeing authentic reactions, you can't really see the path to progress. Here's another secret about publication. Opportunity begets opportunity. Though it's always best to be paid for publication, I can't tell you how many times I've accepted an unpaid gig and it's led to a chain of fabulous next opportunities. In fact, the reason I'm able to give this talk is because in January, I agreed to provide a quote to a journalist for her article, which was read by a TV producer who contacted me to be featured in an on-air segment in February, which was seen by an OER staff member who then invited me to give this talk today. Opportunity begets opportunity. Obviously, do not run yourself ragged or ignore finances. Time, health, and money are precious, but do consider taking the leap and getting your voice out there about something that matters to you in a way that previously might have seemed out of reach. Speaking of what's in reach, one of the greatest gifts we can give our students is to model for them what is possible. Have pride in your ideas and sing them far and wide. And then honestly discuss with your students about the journey and joys of publishing so they can learn from your real attempts, stumbles and all. Our world needs to hear from your students and from you. Thank you and feel free to reach out to me at drawingsof.com or at worldlily, L-I-L-L-I-E, to chat further.